Mark is a member of the European Parliament for, from the Czech Republic and Vice President of Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy. He is also the President of the Free Citizen Party in the Czech Republic, which he founded in 2009. The European election held in May 2014 was the political party's first real electoral success. Peter Mark has a PhD in finance. Later he became an advisor to Václav Klaus, president of the Czech Republic, and the executive director of the think tank, his think tank, Center for Economics and Politics, which is now known as the Václav Klaus Institute. He is the author of two books of the European Union, The Pitfalls of the European Integration and How to Secede from the EU. Peter Mark, I give you the floor. Thank you, Yasmine. It's uh, my great pleasure to be here in Jerusalem. Uh, you reminded me of uh, publishing the laissez-faire magazine. And in fact, uh, I have published and uh, translated dozens of articles. And probably it's a coincidence that many authors who uh, have inspired me are of Jewish origin. Uh, you mentioned uh, Friedrich Hayek, uh, Ludwig Mises, Milton Friedman, uh, Ayn Rand, or of living people Steve Horowitz or um, uh, Walter Williams. Uh, these great thinkers have influenced me and uh, now we can see that there are two ways how we can advance economic freedom, intellectually or Politically, uh, for a long time, I had been trying to advance economic freedom um, in think tanks. And six years ago, we decided to establish a very new political party, the Free Citizens Party in the Czech Republic. And now, together, we are trying to advance economic freedom on the political uh, uh, level, on the political scene. Uh, today, we had many speakers speaking on the topic of security. There were many speakers mentioning the new threats we are facing uh, in Israel, in Europe, generally in our Western civilization. Uh, and some people think that now, when we see these threats, these threats must be, uh, security must be put on the first place and we should not speak that much about low taxes, less regulation, and so on. But I want to argue that just because we face these threats, the urgency to advance uh, economic freedom is even more stronger because only if we are strong, if we have strong economies, if we have growing economies, we can effectively uh, protect ourselves against these threats. So if we want to have strong armies, we must be economically free. Um, we advocate uh, the right of a man to be free, simply the right to pursue uh, happiness. And it's not only because we believe that we have the right to be free. It's not just about the belief. We have also some, I would say, scientific evidence in favor of economic freedom. So let's me ma let me mention uh, three points why we can prove that economic freedom is good 
for uh, the whole economy. Uh, I, I will mention uh, the English author of the 18th century, uh, Arthur Young, who said, if I quote it well, give uh, a man to the secure possession a bleak rock and he will turn it into a garden. Give him a garden to a nine-year lease and he will turn it into a desert. Uh, I think that everyone can remember his own experience on how this works. The ownership matters. If we can take food for free, we often eat too much. If we uh, use a rented car, we drive a little bit less carefully than if we drive our own car. If we live in a rented apartment, we care in a different way uh, than if it is ours. I had spent the first 14 years of my life under the communist rule in what was called Czechoslovakia. Even uh, although I was a child, I can remember that almost everything was owned and operated by the state, by the government. People could own only their personal belongings, clothes, uh, furniture, a car, but everything, houses, factories, land, was owned by the government. And therefore, the socialist economy was simply inefficient. Uh, communism or socialism and the Soviet Union and so on were defeated because they had very uh, inefficient economies. Nowadays we have, we have relics of this socialism, some state-owned or state-operated enterprises in the Czech Republic and probably in many other countries like state railways, state post office and so on, uh, which are usually uh, not very efficient, which should be um, put into a competition or privatized according to my opinion. So ownership matters and that's why we should advocate private ownership and we should protect it. Uh, second point why, according to my opinion, uh, economic freedom is justified from a scientific level is what Milton Friedman said about how people spend money. He said there are four ways how uh, people can spend money. First, and according to Milton Friedman, and I agree with that, the most efficient way is when you spend your own money on yourself, when you decide what to buy, what, whether to buy this or that mobile phone and so on and so on. Or you can spend your own money on someone else, like giving a gift some, to someone. This is, according to Friedman, less efficient because you economize, you look for the cheapest price, but you don't know exactly what are the preferences of, uh, uh, of the people whom you give uh, the gift. Or you can spend uh, someone else's money on yourself. Or, which is worst of all four ways, you can spend uh, someone else's money on someone else, which is what the government does. And by definition, this is the least efficient because uh, government officials don't economize. They spend someone else's money, so why to look for a cheaper laptop or whatever? And they cannot know the preferences of other people to whom they provide the public services, including schooling and so on. So this is another point why government spending is less efficient than private spending. My last, the third point is from the mathematical theory of uh, games. Uh, if we conclude a contract, a private contract on buying something, it is a voluntary um, transaction, which means that both contracting parties believe that they will be better off. 
after the transaction. If a thief steals money from you, or if the government takes taxes from you, then both parties are not better off because the taxpayers are worse off and the government or someone who receives the money from the government is better off. In private transactions, we have both parties better off. The total level of well-being is increased if people trade voluntarily. And therefore, we advocate free trade. We advocate low taxes and less regulation. And uh, fortunately, now, we have clear guidelines, for instance, those provided by the Heritage Foundation. So if we want to increase the, uh, the economic freedom in the Czech Republic or in other countries, we can simply look at the index of economic freedom and we can think of what should we do in order to uh, step up on the index. Uh, what taxes we can cut, what regulation we can cut, and so on. So we, we believe that uh, economic freedom leads to prosperity. Milton Friedman also said that it leads not only to prosperity, it also leads to uh, more equality among people. Let me quote a short uh, sentence, short quotation from Milton Friedman. A society that puts freedom first will, as a happy byproduct, end up both greater freedom and greater equality. Though a byproduct of freedom, greater equality is not an incident. A free society releases uh, the energies and abilities of people to pursue their own objectives. It prevents some people from arbitrarily suppressing others. I would add one more word to this quotation that economic freedom brings as a byproduct not only prosperity and more equality, but also more security and safety from various threats we face. Thank you very much.